الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد one of the excuses or reasons for perhaps delaying one's prayer is if food is present and here we have a hadith of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam which refers to us when it is sometimes when it's better to pray and sometimes when it is better to delay the prayer a bit and this hadith illustrates for us when it it, may, it clarifies for us when it's permissible to delay the prayer that it's an excusable reason for delaying the prayer when it's excusable an aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha an nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qaal idha aqimat as-salat wa hadar al-asha fa abda'u bi asha the prophet and this is uh, related in bukhari and muslim collected in bukhari and muslim in this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that was narrated by the mother of the believers Aisha radiyallahu taala anha, she said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that if the prayer is is being established or has been established, and food has become present, meaning uh, the food for uh, your your dinner, your dinner has become made present then you should begin with your dinner and this is collected in Bukhari and Muslim Sheikh Ali Bassam gives us the meaning of this hadith in general he says Salat requires from us khushur wa khudur wa hudur al qalb he said that prayer it requires from us that we should have uh humbleness and, 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 and firm concentration and humility before our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and our hearts should be present and that's because prayer is the spirit of Islam or the soul of Islam and it is by having whether the heart is present or not this relates to the uh, completeness of the prayer or it's possibly it's even invalid uh, the fact that it may be invalid the fact if a person's heart is not present or is present and we'll give an example before we continue on for example the person who enters the prayer and their heart is busy with a business deal transaction that they've just performed or they're going to perform right after the prayer or something and unfortunately some of our brothers and sisters are tested to such an extent that perhaps even something haram can busy their heart for example for those who are tested and maybe go to nightclubs then perhaps they pray some people pray and they do these activities and perhaps even pray in congregation so a person can enter the prayer and maybe pray if they're by themselves pray really quickly if they're in congregation their prayer can actually be busy with what's going to happen that's haram that with the things that they're going to do they're going to go to the dance club and they're gonna get their groove on and they're gonna do this and they're gonna do that or perhaps someone is tested with something else with uh, a, a, a very firm attraction to the opposite sex so a man may enter the prayer and he's busy thinking about women or vice versa the sister enters the prayer and she's busy thinking about men so this shows us the fitna that we have to try our best to be aware of and at the same time it illustrates for us the importance of having our hearts focused on the salat humbling ourselves before our Lord because these are real situations that happen and 
this can perhaps at least at a minimum it takes away some of the edger from your prayer if not some actions can be a person can be so busy with outside activity perhaps maybe their prayers even invalid even they're just it's just they're doing yo almost yoga poses or just movements that it has no value for their soul and for completing the prayer which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with. So those are some of the things that we have to be aware of when it comes to the prayer. Then the Shaykh, he also mentions the reason, like per pertinent to this hadith, is that when people are in the situation of being busy with food and drink then perhaps they may miss the benefit of the prayer because their mind they're hungry and they're thirsty and they're busy in thought about uh, during the prayer about things that uh, distract them from the prayer and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we have to be careful and this hadith is something that illustrates for us just that Alhamdulillah. Some of the benefits we gain from this hadith, as the Shaykh mentions, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, one of the things he says, he said that if food and drink becomes present and it uh, the time for prayer enters, then the food and the drink should be, uh, the person should eat and drink before praying. As long as the time for Salat is not uh, a restricted time, meaning there's very little time to pray this prayer. If there's very little time, then of course, then you should pray before you, uh, before you eat and drink. You should not eat and drink and pray the prayer outside of its time. So this is what the Sheikh is saying here, uh, which is very important for us to understand that point. Another benefit he mentions, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, is that from the apparent meaning of the hadith, hadith the zahir of the hadith, is that regardless of whether a person needs to eat or not, that they should uh, eat and drink before praying. And then he mentions that, however, Many of the scholars restrict this. They restrict this to a person necessitating food and drink, meaning that they, they need to eat and drink or, or it's really going to disturb them a lot. But if you're not super hungry and it's not going to really disturb your prayer, then they say, the majority of the ulama, or many of the ulama, they say that it is better, of course, to pray the salat and then eat. So depending on your need, which you, you know better about your own status, that if you're really excessively hungry and you're going to be thinking about food during the prayer, and as long as there's time to get this salat in, then it's better to eat and drink before praying. But if it's not a big deal and it's not going to affect your prayer, then pray the salat and then come back and eat or what have you. Another benefit of this prayer, uh, another benefit of this hadith, is that the Shaykh mentions that one of the reasons that are a legitimate reason for missing Salat al-Jama'ah is that if a person needs to eat, if they necessitate need to, needing to eat. So this, he said that this hadith illustrates that for us as well. That if food is present and the person needs to eat, you know, it's going to disturb their prayer if they do not eat or they do not drink, then this is an udhr, this is an excuse for them to uh, miss the salat in the jama'ah and, you know, and pray the jama'at, you know, pray the salat, of course, at their home or what have you, or, you know, wherever they're going to pray it. As long, and, and the sheikh also mentions, as long as this is not a regular habit, meaning that every maghrib or every whatever, you delay 
your salat and miss your jam salat al jamaa because you want to eat and drink. No, but this is in case it's a uh, time comes up and it's necessary, but you should not make this a regular habit, as the Sheikh mentions, and may Allah have mercy upon him. And us as well, I mean. Uh, the last benefit the Sheikh mentioned is that this hadith illustrates for us the importance of having humility in our prayer and concentration and leaving off those things which busy us, busy our minds, busy our hearts. And that what is required from us during the prayer is a heart that is present and that is uh, there to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is focus on the worship of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be able to correct our prayers and to come closer to him subhanahu wa ta'ala wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad